Today, our scripture reading is taken from the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. I'm reading from the NIV version. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shalom, brother and sister in Christ. First, I want to say thank you uh, to the leadership of the Wesley Methodist Church clan uh, for inviting me uh, to share today. Uh, it is an honor uh, for me to share the Word of God and also to share about the Oran Asli ministry and uh, the partnership between uh, the urban church uh, and also the Oran Asli ministry in the village. Uh, I also Oran Asli. Uh, I came from Perak. Kampa Pera. Uh, I'm from Sumai tribe. I already married with Sister Dewi and we have three daughters. Uh, my first daughter, uh, Rebecca, she is 24 years old. Uh, now she is serving with us as a full time in our church. Uh, my second daughter, Priscilla, uh, she is working with Sunway Medical Hospital uh, as a nurse. She is 22 years old. Uh, and my third daughter, uh, Emily, uh, now she is 18 years old. Uh, later, she will uh, further her study uh, at Kuala Lumpur City College uh, by the end of October. Uh, I also pastoring the church uh, at Mantin, our church called Greja Kota Iman Mantin AG. Uh, under Greja Kota Iman Mantin, we have uh, three outreach. Uh, first outreach at Kampung Orang Asli Labu near Seremban. Second outreach, uh, Kampung Orang Asli Gebok uh, near Nilai. Uh, the third one is uh, at Semenyi Town. We call it Gereja Kota Iman uh, Echo Hill AG. Uh, because our, our third outreach in town, uh, because our church member is among the uh, Sabahan, Sarawakian, and also Indonesian. Praise God. Uh, uh, today, before we learn the Word of God, before we learn about the Orang Asli ministry, uh, let's pray. Uh, let's pray that God will touch us uh, today, uh, during our session today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father in heaven, thank you for your presence today. No matter where we are for this moment. We know that you are here with us. Bless us with your word and to touch us during our session today. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Uh, today, I want to share about the uh, Orang Asli, the need of the Orang Asli, and also the partnership between Yoran Asli and also the urban church. Uh, we know that many church, uh, sometimes also many NGOs, uh, they try to help the Yoran Asli community. Uh, we know that sometimes they have a good program for them. They organize good program that they can build the life of the Yoran Asli so they, they, they can build also the spiritual of the Oran Asli. But until now, we do not know how many church, how many NGO uh, 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 success to build up the Oran Asli community. Uh, even, even that we know, uh, there is a church, there is an NGO also, they fail when they try to help uh, the Oran Asli community. Uh, that is until now, we do not know the percentage. Uh, we do not know the percentage. Uh, 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 how many church, how many NGO they are success when they try to help the orang asli. We do not know how many percentage. Uh, 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 some church, some NGO they fail uh, when they try to help the orang asli community. 
Uh, but until now, you can see, even if they are a failure, yeah, uh, 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 with their effort, they want to help the orang asli, but they are still, they are still uh, uh, helping, they are still trying to help the orang asli community. Uh, uh, this one really, really touched my heart when I, I saw the church, when I saw the NGO, uh, they never give up. Yeah, they never give up and they try to help the orang asli community. Do you know why? I believe, I believe that they really love the orang asli. They really love, uh, they want to help the orang asli. They really love, they want to build up the life of the orang asli. Praise God, praise God. Today I want to bring you uh, uh, to the scripture from it. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Uh, you can see it's like them. Uh, 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 this translation is from NIV translation. Uh, you can read them. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, just now I mentioned to you about why the NGO, why the church, the urban church, they never give up uh, to help the orang asli. They never give up. Even sometimes they fail when they try to help the orang asli. I believe this is the, 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 the good foundation. Uh, sometimes we, we need to learn about helping other people. Because God already mentioned in the Bible that He created us. He created us not only as a disciple of Jesus, not only as a believer, but God wants us to do good to other people. God wants us to, to, to live in the kindness, to live in the goodness in our life. That's why the Bible uh, uh, teaches us that we need to do good. We need to live in kindness. We need to help other people. Because God teaches us, uh, we need to love people by helping other people. That's why sometimes we need to know in our effort to help other people, sometimes we will fail. Yeah? But because the love of God in our life, because the, the, the God teaching us uh, 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 with his scripture here, uh, that we need to do good. We need to do good to other people. There's a quote from Mother Teresa. Uh, she said like this, uh, The good you do today will be forgotten tomorrow. Do, do good anyway. Uh, this quote really uh, uh, encourages us to meditate on what has the Bible teach us to continue to do good uh, to people uh, uh, that really in need in their life. Sometimes maybe we fail to help them. Sometimes we help them many times. Uh, sometimes also they will forget about what we have done in their life. But Mother Teresa teach us, this quote teach us that we still need to do good. We still need to help the people really in need. You know why? Because God loves us <clears throat> and also we love the people, the people of God and He teach us to help them. Because we love them, we need to help them. That's why this quote really teach us and we need to meditate that we need to keep doing it is a word of God itself. Teach us how to live in kindness. Teach us how to do good in our life. And the second quote from the Mother Teresa, she said like this, Do things for people not because of who they are or what they do in return, but because of who you are. That is why the urban church, the NGO, they will not afraid of the failure when they try to help the orang asli. They never give up. They never give up. Because, because you see from, from the quote that we hear just now, this is because of who we are. The Bible tells us that we are the creation of God. 
We are created to live in kindness and to do good. To do good to other people. Because God loves us, we need to love other people. Because God helps us, we need to help other people. That's what the Bible tells us. We are prepared. We prepare to do good, brothers and sisters. Praise God. Now, I want to share about the challenge uh, of the Orang Asli nowadays. Uh, uh, later, before uh, we learn about partnership between the urban church and also the Orang Asli church, uh, we need to know the challenge that faced by the Orang Asli nowadays. Uh, I know that your church also uh, has a good fellowship uh, and also partnership uh, with the Orang Asli church uh, at Semenyi. Uh, I know that you have one couple uh, that that you have partnership with them to do ministry at Semenyi. Uh, I met up with them, I think, three years ago at Kampa when we have a conference at Kampa uh, together uh, with Dr. Lim. Uh, he is a, a, a mission director in your church. I'm very happy uh, and also uh, glad that you have a partnership uh, with the Orang Asli to help the Orang Asli village, especially the Orang Asli church in Semenyi. Uh, but today, I want to share a challenge, a challenge that faced by the Orang Asli uh, nowadays. Number one, uh, the challenge that faced by the Orang Asli is poverty. Uh, the government data in 2019 said that poverty of the Orang Asli is 33.9%. We are not sure whether the percentage is true or just an assumption. But according to the United Nations data, uh, they said that poverty of the Oran Asli actually is beyond of the actual percentage. Uh, that means the poverty of the Oran Asli actually is more than 33.6%. More than that. You know why? Because sometimes uh, the village is deep inside there. Uh, sometimes uh, they, are, uh, they are really interior until the government, until the people cannot go, in, cannot go there. That's why sometimes we do not know these people include or not include into the data. Uh, this is the difficulty that faced by the government or the people that they do data. Uh, for the Orang Asli, for the poverty of the Orang Asli. Uh, that's why even they say 33.6% actually is maybe more than that. Maybe 50, maybe 60, maybe 70%. We do not know. But we need to know that the challenge that faced by the Orang Asli nowadays is poverty. Number two, school drop up among the Orang Asli children. A government made a report about the Orang Asli student dropout is very high, very high. How to come out from poverty if the Orang Asli children always drop out from school? We know that uh, many of them only study until from six, uh, standard six. Not many, not many of them can finish until they are from five. This happened because the family is staff. Uh, 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 they never pay attention toward their children's education. Some of them uh, do not want to finish their study because they want to work. They want to work early. Some of them, they want to marry earlier. Some of them, because of the distance uh, between school and the village is very far. It's not easy for them to send their children to school. And, and, and this, this has happened especially in Pahangge, in Kelantan, uh, because the distance between villages, villages and also uh, uh, the school. And uh, the, the, another problem also is because of the uh, environment itself. Yeah? Uh, when the Orang Asli children went to school, um, they have been mocking and bullied in the school. Uh, we can see this one every year or so, we can see in the media, uh, the news reported about the Orang Asli being bullied, being mocking by the other people in school. Uh, that's why in, 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 in our ministry, uh, even when I visited 
uh, many many orang asli religious I always told them I always teach them that education is very important because without education we cannot change our life without education we cannot change our community I always told them that you need to pay attention on your children education because if they study if they have education if they have knowledge they can change their life they can change the community they can change the living of the, 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 the family in the village this is how I always teach them I always encourage them told them that education is very important Praise God. The third one, the challenge that faced by the Orang Asli is the operation toward their right is denied. Every year, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, every year we can hear, hear the we can hear the news about the confiscation of the Orang Asli land and their right is denied. You can see that in newspaper, even in the news in television. We can see their lands taken away by the other people, the land taken away by the government. It seems like the Orang Asli is not the original people in Malaysia until their right is denied. Not only that, their land also confiscated for illegal logging, for quarry, for them or for development. Many of Orang Asli very disappointed which is action and I'm not sure how the Orang Asli ever to value the independency of the country of Malaysia every year. Some people say Merdeka, 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 Merdeka. But I'm not sure about the Orang Asli, how they think about Merdeka. Because I think that Merdeka is no meaning among the Orang Asli people. Because we still live under oppression. We still live under difficulty because our right is denied. I remember uh, 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 one day that I saw the one head village in the television. He says like this, because on that day he, he, he begging the government uh, uh, so they, they, that their land won't be taken. He says like this, to where again we want to run i repeat again to where again we want to run run to the mountain while the mountain is taken for illegal logging run to the rocking area while the rocking area are taken for quarries run to the river while the river is made into dam there is someone asking me brothers and sisters why do our Asli people stay in the jungle? He said that the jungle will be taken and it will be better for the Orang Asli try something new that you can stay in the city. Brothers and sisters, here I want to emphasize that the Orang Asli mindset is not the same as the people mindset in the city. Because the Orang Asli life is not the same as the life in the city. If we put the people, the city people in the jungle, I'm sure they will die. Because they do not know how to live in the jungle. If we put Orang Asli in the middle of the city, I'm sure they will die. Because this is not their life. They are left in the jungle. They can survive in the jungle. They cannot survive in the middle of the city. Same thing of the city people. They can survive in the city. But they, know that they will not survive if we put them in the jungle. This, this happened because the way of thinking is very different. You see, you see, brothers and sisters, when the Orang Asli see the jungle, when the Orang Asli they see the river, when the Orang Asli they see the rocking area, they will see their survival. They see their life. They can see that from jungle, from river, from rocking area, they can, they can get their food. They can get fertilized in the jungle, at the river, 
at the rocking area. It's different from the city people. If the city people, when they see jungle, oh, it's a big money. If the city people, when they see river, oh, it's a big money. If the city people saw the, 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 the rocking area, oh, it's a big money for quarries. This is this, very different. The way of thinking is very different. That's why, uh, this is the reason why the Orang Asli always been oppressed. Because Orang Asli see jungle is their life. The Sisi people see jungle is money. That's why their land is taken. And also that's why their right is denied. I have seen there and Orang Asli with this has now changed to a well-known city. Long time ago, that village is occupied by the Orang Asli and a playground for the Orang Asli community to play. But now, it has become a place for a rich people. There's a house for the rich people. Huh? Uh, where the village has become a city and living the Orang Asli in difficulties. In the olden days, uh, they can do rubber tapping or collecting forest product and they can have a good life in their village. But now, I have seen by my, with my own eyes, some of them they collecting rubbish from the city. Last time they can collect forest product and do rubber tapping. But now, no more. Because their village turned to well-known city. They are still poor. The rich occupy their land, that we think that they are very rich, but no, they are still poor. The rich become richer. So that's why uh, sometimes I also, when I saw that happen, it doesn't make sense. I, I, I feel very heartbroken. One day why, when I sit in the, in, the, in the mama restaurant, when I saw their children collecting rubbish, I cried. Last time, they no need to collect rubbish. Last time, they, they can collect many things from the forest. But now, it's different. And leaving them in difficulty. So, now we need to think what we can do. So, what we can help in our actually life. Uh, it is very important for, for us to, to know, especially the urban church. Uh, we need to join hands to fulfill to fulfill the need of the Orang Asli. So, how, how the urban church can partnership with the Orang Asli church to fulfill the need of the Orang Asli life and their spiritual? So, now, I have three important things to share. Uh, we need to know sometimes uh, um, Many urban church, many NGO, they have a good program. Yeah, when they partnership with the Orang Asli, they have a good program. Yeah, they they, they organize uh, a, a very well project. Uh, just want to help the Orang Asli community. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, that Wesley Methodist Church claim also you have a partnership with Orang Asli Church in Sumini. I also know that. Uh, that many urban church uh, they try to help the Orang Asli uh, with the good programs, they organize good projects uh, so they can help the Orang Asli uh, not only education but also their economic yeah, and also their the way of thinking, the mindset. But in our place, in our church, uh, uh, we do, we did different things. Yeah? That's why I want to share three things what we have done in Mantin. Uh, uh, that's why uh, it's good for us to learn one another. Maybe I also can learn from your church how you, your church can partnership with the Orang Asli at Semenyi. Uh, even also in, you, you can learn from us how we help our people in the village. You know? uh, because we, we, do, we are not like big church. Uh, I have a good program. We are not like the NGO, they have good organizing, organize good projects to help the Orang Asli. Uh, we, we do different things. Uh, we do different things. Uh, 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 yes, we, we have same need. We have 
same challenge, we face same challenge, but we have different way of doing. Maybe we can learn to one another and how to help the Orang Asli community. These are three things what we have done uh, at Mantin. First, I want to talk about empowering of their children education. Yeah, you can see in the slide there. Uh, 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 previously, I have emphasized that education is very important. I always telling their family that they should pay attention to their children education. Without education, uh, we will keep we will keep continue living in poverty. Uh, one of the things that can change their life is education. That's why we are in Mountain, we are working with the urban church, we are working with few people that really having a burden, really having a heart uh, to help the Orang Asli community, especially number one is, is uh, uh, a student, uh, education, uh, to make sure that the Orang Asli children can study and to encourage them to continue to study until university. That's why now we cooperate with few people uh, 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 from Fremban churches and from, from Kajang churches to do two things. Number one, uh, we provide a tuition to help uh, the Oran Asi student in their studies. Uh, brothers and sisters, we, are co we, are cooperate, we cooperate with uh, several Christian teachers from Fremban uh, to come to our church in the village. Uh, that they can teach the children during the weekend, the Saturday and Sunday. Every weekend, they, 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 there will be a three different group. Uh, they went to different village to give an education and to give a tuition to our children. They, they, they teach both primary and also the secondary school. They also encourage them to study hard and to finish their study. Uh, this one is very important because I always uh, tell the people, I, I mentioned earlier before that education is very important. That's why we cooperate with the, 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 the city church, you know, from Sremban church, from Kajang church, uh, the Christian teachers that they have the burden to help the wrong asli, that they can come together uh, every weekend into the three different places that they can teach the children that they can help the children uh, toward their education. Uh, but now we need to stop for a while because uh, during the uh, pandemic, uh, already, I think it's uh, going for two years, uh, we don't have tuition in the, in the village because of the situation that we are faced uh, right now. Uh, but a few days ago, one of the teachers, she called me, she said that, uh, Pastor Sanusi, how are now? Can we go to the village that we can teach the children, we can help the children toward the education? I said, uh, we wait for a while uh, until the situation is okay, yeah, we can cross the border, and then the, 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 the cases maybe is, is going down, uh, we will start again, maybe uh, next month or maybe early of the uh, year that we can do again. Uh, we will help the oral asli children uh, to work into their uh, education. This is number one, what we do, we, we, what we are doing. We provide tuition, we help them uh, because we know education is very important. This is how our church, we collaborate, uh, we partnership with few churches from city uh, that they can come and help us toward education uh, to help the oral asli children to study. Number two, uh, we have school fund for our oral asli Student. We will do this every year uh, when the school is starting. We help the Orang Asi students who are not able to buy new school uniform uh, when the school is starting. Sometimes the family they have three kids, sometimes they have four kids. Uh, in the one family, it's, it's not easy for them to provide school new school uniform to all of their children. So on that time, we will help them because we have the fund, we raise the fund. Uh, every year, we partnership with the urban churches uh, uh, to, to have some fund, to raise a fund that we can help the Orang Asli children 
uh, so we can buy a new clothes for them. So, so when they go to school, they have new clothes. Even sometimes the, the family with three, four children, they uh, can afford it, but on that time we help them. So all of the three children or the four children together, when they go to school, they will have a new clothes. They also will have uh, a pencil, a pencil box, or another equipment uh, for them to go to school. That's the two things we do uh, to work into their education. The one is we provide tuition. But two, we also have a school fund that can help them go to school with a new uh, school uniform. Okay, this is the, the, the empowerment of the education. Number two, number secondly, what we do to help our people in the village, in the mountain, uh, is empowering their economy. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we did different things uh, uh, from other urban church or NGO when they want to help the orang asli community. Uh, in Mantin, we did different things. Yeah, I yeah I went to to many places. Yeah, I also heard uh, many church and also NGO. They have good program. They have organized good project. So they can help to empower the orang asli economy. But for 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 our ministry in Mantin, we do it in a different way. Not like how many churches churches do when they help the economy of the Orang Asli community. They might give a start up with the fund to start a project in the village of the Orang Asli. Yes, I know there is a church or NGO, uh, they raise chicken or they raise goat, uh, and also they start with the agriculture uh, 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 to help to empower the economical of the Orang Asli, and they start with the good fund. Yeah, uh, uh, maybe they start with the project with the good fund to help the orang asli. But what we have done in Mantin is only motivating them on how to be independent. Again, I want to uh, say this in Mantin, what we have done, we only motivating them on how to be independent. Yeah, we tell them, you have land. What you want to do on your land? Yeah. Uh, it is not easy. Yeah, it is not easy. Uh, it needs a long time, long years to convince them uh, and to make it work. Uh, actually, why we do motivating? Why we try to motivate them? Because uh, 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 because we want to help them to change their own mindset, mindset that the orang asli always depends on people. The orang asli always asks for help. Yeah. I want to teach them that you yourself can do it. That's why every year we try to motivate them that from your land you will survive. We motivate them from your land you will get money. That's why we, 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 we try to educate them. I always uh, 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 teach them that don't wait other people, other people to help you. Yes, sometimes uh, when we do this few years ago, not few years, many years ago, there is a member always asking, Pastor, I think better we ask for help. I told them, yes, sometimes it's good to get help, but we need to start from ourselves. If we have land, we need to think and we need to do something. That's why I told them, I encourage them, we need to start from what we have. Yeah? We need to start from what we have. Don't think about the company. Don't think about the corporacy to start our project. I, I told them, no. We need to start first. 
That's why we named this project as a self-supporting project. That means when we see our land, we need to think something. What we can do on our land. Don't think about company, don't think about corporacy, don't think about maybe urban church to help us. We need to uh, do self-supporting project. Uh, we need to do agriculture project in our own land. I told them, as, as I mentioned earlier, I told them that if you have a land, you will survive. If the orang asli have a land, actually, the orang asli will have, they will help survive. Number two, what we do to empower their economy is start small and grow big. Uh, we are starting from what we have with us. I always tell them, it is good to have a big dream. I always tell them again, it is good to have a big dream, but we must start from small part. Small first. All our church members have a land. In Mountain, uh, all our church members, they have land. And now, if you can see the, the, the picture, it's like that. Uh, they planted honey jackfruit, the champadak nangka, uh, the musang kings, durians, the, the duri hutam durians. Uh. Actually, when we see on the picture, actually this one is already growing big. Ready? They already harvest uh, 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 from their land. Uh, uh, I, I want to tell you, this family, you see the, 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 the picture, even myself also there, I planted a Musang King. Uh, when I encourage our member to do a, a self-supporting project, uh, to do start small and grow big, I need to do first. Uh, even uh, many of our church, church members, they start to plant it, Jackfruit and also the Chopra Nanka. Now they harvest. They harvested. Yeah, they harvest. Every month they can get uh, uh, yeah, 2,000. Every month they can get 3,000. Sometimes they can get, if good price, the market price is good, they can get 5,000 or 6,000. But actually, we start from small first. Yeah? Uh, I told them. I told them. If you want to do something on your land, as I mentioned earlier, don't think about company, but you, you, you yourself do it. I told them, first, after you clear your land, buy 10 jackfruit. Or maybe 20 jackfruit. First, they say it's very difficult, but when they started to do it, they are very happy to do it. This month they buy 10 jackfruit. Next month they buy 20 jackfruit. But after a few months, yeah, after one year, they are also sure they can, they can occupy all of their land with jackfruit, with champarat nangka, with the durian. After three years, after four years, after the harvest from their land, they are very happy. One day, one of our members, he told me, I am Pastor Sadusi, if I do this 10 years ago, I will, be, I will become rich. If I, I hear you 10 years ago, I will be rich now. But I told him it's okay. It is a good start. Even now, we teach all our members, we need to do something in our economy. That's why I told them, don't wait other people to help you. You, you, you yourself, you need to help yourself. Yeah? You need to support our, your own project. You need to start from small. Because when you start from small, uh, after one month, after three months, after one year, you will occupy all of your land. When your land, when your tree is harvested, that time you will stay that you will get good money to support your family. So that's why uh, we are really happy now. Our member, they can get thousands and thousands every month because they start from their 
own fund. They are very happy. They own it because they use their own fund. Yeah, that's why they are survive now because their mindset not depend on people, but they help themselves how to do the project, how to help their own family. Hallelujah. The third one, what we are doing in our ministry here in Mountain is empowering their mindset. I want to uh, repeat again. First, we help them in education. Uh, we call the tuition teacher to come and also we provide them school fund to help them to buy clothes, uh, to buy school uniform every year. Uh, number, like number two, we, we also uh, call it a self-supporting project to empower uh, their economy. And also we do start first, start small and grow big. Uh, we help them to, to have a good mindset that they can do project by their own self. They can fund their project by their own fund. So the thirdly uh, now is empowering their mindset. Yeah, what is empowering their mindset? Uh, because the Oran Asli always think that when they work for others forever, they will work for others. Sometimes I challenge them uh, to think or to change the way of their thinking. Uh, I told them, if you work for somebody, you must challenge yourself to do something beyond of your Expect, expectation. No? Because I always ask them, how your work? They say, ah, I'm, I'm working, I'm very happy with my work. I work as a cleaner, I'm happy. I work as a cleaner. Uh, I help people. I, 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 I work for the Tauke. Yeah, cutting the wood, clean the clean the, 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 the orchard farm. Now they're very happy. They do. Uh, 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 they work with other people. Some of them they work as a plaster shilling. You know? they're very happy. You no, know? the the Tauke pay them one hundred ringgit a day. Uh, Sometimes they're happy because the Tauke pay them one hundred fifty a day. You now they say I'm very happy working with this Tauke. You no, know? uh, because this is a mindset. Yeah, the simple mindset. But I told them uh, you must think. Uh, uh, you must think beyond of your. Expectation. If you are a cleaner, yeah, in future you must have cleaning company. If you work for people, you chop tree or you, you clean the land, you must think more than that. That you maybe can take a contract to cut a tree, take a contract to clean the land. Yeah. I even I told uh, two of our church member who work as a plaster shilling. Same thing. Hey, your Tauke pay you 100. Your Tauke pay you 150 a day. No, why not one day you tell the Tauke, give me the contract, I will do by myself. No, uh, uh, many years ago, this member told me, uh, Pastor, I don't have confidence. Uh, I know it's, it's, it's not easy for them to start. They don't have confidence. Yeah? But I always challenge them many years. Hey, think Think, think carefully. Yeah, think beyond of your expectation. Uh, you must do it. You can do it. I always told them. Sometimes they say no, no, no. I always tell them you can, you can, you can, and you can. This is uh, 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 how we help them to change their mindset. But now I'm very happy. Yeah, two years ago, yeah, when they started to uh, uh, take a courage to take a contract with their boss. At that time, I'm very happy. You know, they started to take a contract uh, to do pasta shilling. You know, they have good money when, when they do, uh, they, when they take a contract subcon from their boss. Even now, last time when they, 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 they work from people, they cut three, they pay them only 120 per day. No, they use a chainsaw, cut three per day, 120. But now, 
when they take courage to take a contract from the Tauke, from the Orchard Tauke, Orchard Farm Tauke, they told, okay Tauke, one tree we cut, one tree is 200. Uh, if 10 tree is 2,000, if 100 tree is 20,000. Now, after they take this contract, they gather all our member, they work together. Uh, they cut the tree. Can imagine one week one person can get sometimes some people can get one thousand some people they can get two thousand yeah because they change their mindset not only to work as a coolie at the orchard farm but now they change their mindset they work for themselves they take a contract now they get good money so that's how we help them to change their mindset because if they change their mindset, their life is changed. Their economy will be changed. So that's why it's very important uh, in our ministry when we help the Orang Asli ministry. So, brothers and sisters, uh, this is the three things what we did uh, in our ministry at Mantin. Uh, we empower the education, uh, we empower their economy uh, with self-supporting project. Uh, we ask them to, to start small and grow big. And the last one, uh, we empower their mindset uh, that they can, we, we, we challenge them how to take ownership from their work. I, I hope that what we are doing here, uh, the church can learn something new. Uh, I know, I understand that uh, uh, it's not easy to do what we are doing here at Mantin, but I believe uh, your church, um, Wesley Meditation Clan, can learn something new uh, uh, in the effort to help the Oran Asli ministry, the Oran Asli community. Even I also, when I went to other places, I will learn something new. Uh, I know that all churches, all uh, believers, we are le learning uh, from one to another. So, uh, thank you so much, brothers and sisters, for the time that given to me to share not only the word of God, but also to share about the Orang Asi ministry and also the partnership, how we partner with the urban church uh, in, the, in, in the effort to help the Orang Asi community. Because all the things we do now is because of our Lord Jesus Christ teach us to live uh, 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 in kindness and so to help other people, to love uh, uh, other people. Brothers and sisters, uh, uh, I want to end with uh, this word of God from Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So all things we do now is because of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we help people, we help because our Lord Jesus Christ, because of who we are. We are creation of God, created by God to do good things. Hallelujah. Thank you so much uh, again. Uh, uh, to the leadership Wesley Church, uh, Wesley Methodist Church plan for, for this opportunity uh, for me to share the word of God. Thank you so much. Let's pray before we end this session. Hallelujah. Dear Lord, thank you for your word today. We are so blessed with your word of encouragement and to do good to other people in our lives. Teach us, Lord, to obey your word. And we pray that you will bless also Wesley Methodist Church clan with their effort, effort to help the Orang Asli community and also to help the community. Uh, thank you, Lord, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you, and God bless you.